Hey, you have pretty eyes. Oh, you can see his eyes. Mr. Green Jeans is a clone cat that carry a gene that is called green fluorescent protein. This gene integrate in his genome, in his chromatin, in his chromosome, in his cells, and express a fluorescence that is green. I am a senior scientist at the Audubon Research Center for Endangered Species, and I work basically in interspecies cloning. One of the century's greatest scientific achievements was unveiled before the eyes of a stunned world. Her name was Dolly the Sheep. Each human life is unique, born of a miracle that reaches beyond laboratory science. I believe we must respect this profound gift and resist the temptation to replicate ourselves. Cloning is probably still a controversial technology. If you survey Americans, you'll still get a huge percentage of people that say cloning is morally wrong, that it opens up Pandora's box, that we're going to clone humans next, sort of all these hypothetical sci-fi scenarios. And that hasn't changed, but I think as cloning has sort of fallen off of front pages, scientists have sort of had some space to quietly go about their work without stirring up controversy at, at every turn. The Audubon Center for Research of Endangered Species, or ACRES, as uh, many people call it for short, is a facility in New Orleans that is devoted to using advanced reproductive technology to help endangered species breed and survive and thrive. We work in assisted reproductive technologies. I specialize in cats and in wild cats. Cloning provides a way to help endangered species reproduce. So if their numbers are dwindling and they're not reproducing well in captivity, you could maybe take a skin sample from an endangered animal and use it to create an identical twin. A lab that focuses exclusively on the cloning of endangered or threatened species is pretty rare. There are not a lot of scientists that are focusing full time on that application of cloning. So cloning from Dolly through the kind of cloning that Akers is doing is generally done through a procedure known as somatic cell nuclear transfer. And a somatic cell is basically any cell in an animal's body that's not a sperm cell or an egg cell. So it could be a skin cell, a muscle cell, something from the body. And so if scientists want to clone, say, a wild cat, they'll take a skin sample from that cat and they can fuse that skin cell with an egg. Um, can you see the DNA here, outside? When that happens, the DNA from the wild cat, from that skin cell, enters the egg. And as the egg turns into an embryo, as it grows and divides, it has the DNA that came from that skin cell. This sort of cloned embryo can then be implanted in a surrogate mother, say, an average house cat that will carry the embryo to term if all goes well and eventually give birth to this 
cloned wildcat kitten. A lot of what they're learning about cat reproduction and cat cloning could be applied to, you know, one hopes anything from cheetahs to lions, tigers, any of those endangered cat species. The other development that I think is really positive and really exciting is the creation of these frozen zoos. Frozen zoos allow scientists to store cells and DNA from animals for hundreds of years. And so if a certain genetic lineage dies out, we have that cell, we have that DNA, and scientists 100 years from now could potentially clone it back into existence. One of the criticisms you hear a lot is that cloning is this high-tech, sexy spectacle, and some scientists think that it actually distracts from these other sort of more basic efforts. And the big problem right now is a lot of these animals have their habitats being destroyed, their habitats are disappearing. So until we can make sure that there's a safe place to release these animals where they won't just be hunted into extinction again, it doesn't make much sense to bring a lot of animals back. Animals, vegetation, human beings, we live together. And human beings are covering the space of the animals. And we are destroying them in some way because we are destroying the environment. We are destroying the animals indirectly. I believe that we need to preserve the animals, are part of this, this planet and are part of our life. And we want the children and the future generations being able to enjoy what, what we enjoy.